Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Loop Learnings. This is the next video in the series. We are making personal expense tracker management system. It's a nice little uh, app which we'll be working on. In the previous video, I have given you the introduction. I have kind of explained what exactly we are building, what we are going to do. And now in this video, we are actually going to work on creating the database, uh, which means we will uh, have Microsoft Access. And in Microsoft Access, we'll be creating the tables and we'll be creating their relationships as well. So before I begin, I just wanted to say, um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. In any case, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do and hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever I upload a new video. Right, so let's actually get to Microsoft Access and let's create the first table. Now, the scope of this video is not to tell you from the start that how to do how to create a table if you are watching this first time ever any access video or if you're still in learning phase i would suggest that you watch one of my other video which is introduction to microsoft access so that will give you very basic information about the tables how to create tables etc etc right so let's go ahead and i will navigate to a ribbon of this application and in here i will uh, click on create and from create, there is a section called tables. Under the table section, I will select a table, right? And I'm going to go to design view so we can add these fields in the design view. So I'll right click and I'll go to design view, but it will ask, hey, give me the name of the table first. So let's give a name of the table. So at first we are going to create users table. So users T, there you go. Now we will add the first field as a user ID second field username we'll keep the data type as a short text and field size 255 we will have email address again short text and 255 we'll have password of the user and let's say password doesn't require 255 characters so we'll reduce the size or the character limits to 25 and now actually i i'm not really interested in these two I'm interested in uh, adding the status field and let's say 25 is enough and status date it would be date and time all right so short date okay so that's done I will go to the data sheet view and let me change the font for the table and that should be Calibri and let's close this now one table is done. Now we'll move on to the next table, which is categories table. Again, we'll go to create tab, table, right click, design view, categories, T, that's the name of the table. And we'll have category ID. We will have, I'm going to skip user ID because you can actually uh, restrict category types to a user as well by adding the user ID field in here but i'm not really interested as of now for this application we may later add it but as of, as of now we'll keep things simple and i'm going to choose category name short text 255 and then again i'm going to use the status and let's say 25 characters uh, field size would be enough okay so that's done now we will move on to the third table which is expenses table now this is the main table in this application so we'll go to create table right click design view and we'll say expenses t and let's go back to excel and we'll copy the name of the field again user id and it would be number field and there we go so always check the properties field properties and always make sure that you know you make the necessary changes always is a better idea or good practice we'll go to the next field category id and this one is also number field why number field because this is a foreign key for uh, this table all right after that we'll go to amount so the amount we can choose uh, currency as a data type and decimal points okay let's let's give two decimal points and default value null and description we will give this um, option to the user to add a little description on the expense and we will say expense date as well when the expense was occurred so that's what we will capture 
as a short date and payment method you can have payment method although this is optional but if you wish you can actually have payment method as cash card or others all right next let's put a limit to this list then we will move okay then status and it should be date time and format will be short date and then we'll have status okay that's enough no need to go with the status date i was about to add status date but it's okay we'll have status and that is enough anyway we'll change the font to calibri for this table all right great and now we'll move to the last table which is budgets okay so we'll go click on create table right click design view budgets t and then we'll have budget id we'll have user id definitely again as i mentioned change the properties category id number change the properties and budget amount uh, let's have it as currency so we'll have decimal points two and default value nothing right so here you can see start date end date rather than this i will add the calendar year and i think this would be better option adding the calendar year there you go and then the status and date and time short date there you go so as you can see within a few minutes we have made the database table tables although these tables are very small very specific not much actually we have added in them because we are creating the basic application but if you are creating sophisticated production application think from all the aspects that you need to cover all right so we can see that the tables are created and the only thing is left is creating the relationships between these tables so we've got four tables we need to create relationship in the tables and relationships are critical in any database application that's why they're called uh, relational database uh, management systems like access and sql server etc etc i'll click on database tools in the ribbon and in the relationships section i'll click on relationships and we'll get this canvas what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag and drop all the four tables all right and user as well okay so now we have got four tables what we need to do is we need to create their relationships what i do uh, generally i actually go to a table and i start from the top and i see what are the foreign keys in this table now what do we mean by foreign key by the way in relational database management system there will always be a primary key and a foreign key let me explain you if in case you are not aware if you are aware i would know that you are aware of it um the primary key is basically let's say this is a user id now user id is residing under the users table as well now user id under the users table will be considered as a primary key user id under any other table any other table including budgets table will be considered as a foreign key so the idea of relationship is look for primary key and foreign key and create a relationship with them so for example to create a relationship i can either uh, select i can start from budgets table which is actually foreign key user id i can drag and drop on the user id in the primary in the, in the main table which is users if i drop you will have we will have one pop up window in here so i would like to explain a little bit before i move on in relationships you can see that there is a table and query here and there is a related table and query here which mean the primary table secondary table primary key secondary tree secondary key not tree uh, you will have it here on the bottom of this uh, little pop up window you will see enforce relational integrity now this is a great option so i usually will select this option now before i explain you this let me explain you that the type of relationship which is going to be created is one to many now there are many types of relationships one to many many to many these are most common but the most common is one to many 
one to many means one user can create multiple expense records one user can have multiple budget records budget for 2024 budget for 2025 etc etc one user can order multiple times so this is basically one to many relationship so you can see here relationship type one to many which is going to be created now coming back to this option called enforce referential integrity i must click here the reason i say that is because i want to enforce this integrity i do not want junk data to go into my application so what do we mean actually by enforced differential integrity so let me explain let's say you are or user is trying to create a budget for user id 100 let's say but if the user id 100 does not exist in the main table which is user table by clicking on this option by checking it on the system x of access will never allow anyone to create budget with user id that does not exist in the users database that's what in integral uh, enforcing the referential integrity is that you are not allowing anyone to feed in the junk data all right so it's a very very important option so please select that then we have cascade updated related records all right so cascade this is also i usually uh, click on that i check it on and what it is basically let's say if a username is uh, you know iron man but after a couple of years or couple of days the user decides to change the name to robert downey junior so they don't have to create a new user for robert downey junior but they can come in here in the user can come in in his or her profile and change the username so whatever username will be stored a new username will be stored in users table that will reflect everywhere within the application that's what the cascade update relate, related fields will do and the last option is cascade delete related record now i do not prefer to click on this and the reason is let's say by mistake or intentionally we delete that user in the database thinking this user is inactive is not being active etc so if the user is deleted whatever records are created in any of the table those will also be deleted along with the deletion of users obviously this is not a good practice so that's why i usually avoid that i'm not saying that this should never be used but depending on the situation this can be used but i rarely use this option i hope that you have understood the type of relationships and what do we mean by one to many relationship although i didn't explain many to many in other types that's because most of the time you and i will be creating one to many relationship all right so i hope you have understood i hope you understood what is the meaning of this and now i will go ahead and create a relationship relationship is created you can see a little one digit here and there is a infinite sign which means one to many all right same we will do with the category id so we'll drag and drop and there you go done now any other foreign key here no now i will move on to the expenses table and we have user id drag and drop we'll click create and then we have category id drag and drop we'll click and create there you go so you have expenses budgets categories users that's what the relational database is all about you have created relationships okay let me just summarize we have created the database tables four tables and then we have created relationships uh, between these tables now the in uh, referential integrity is created we can actually provide the correct data into the database so we can get the correct output from the database as well so this is what i wanted to demonstrate in this video i hope that you have learned something if you like whatever you've seen smash the like button and um, you know subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever i upload a new video thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one